Hello everyone, this is Ashwin here. Today we are going to start a new tutorial series that is web scrapping using Python. So this video is about the introduction of uh, web scrapping, what is the theory behind it and what are the models we are going to use. Everything will be explained in this video and the upcoming videos will be on purely on implementation. So be sure to watch that. Let's dive into the video now. Now what is web scrapping? Web scrapping is a technique which is used to extract large amount of data from the websites to get some useful information out of that. So the data will be extracted and can be stored in a structured format in a CSV. Initially the data will be a unstructured manner so we have to do some pre-processing and uh, store it in a structured format uh, like CSV, JSON, XML etc. Then we can able to use this extracted data according to our needs. So the needs can be uh, data mining, we can able to use the data for uh, deep learning, machine learning, everything it depends on that. We can able to do a lot of analysis using the web scrapping. So here for example, we can able to collect data from e-commerce portals, social media platforms to understand the customer behaviors, sentiments, buying patterns which are critical insights for any business. So this is like a popular technology and uh, most of the companies are depending on that. So this will be a very useful skill for you guys to learn about. Again, so the web scrapping is like an automated technique. We are not going to manually uh, select these things and uh, copy paste uh, to a file. So we are going to extract what information we have needed. That can be a large amount or a small amount. It depends on our needs. As I already mentioned, the website's data will be unstructured. So we have to collect this unstructured data, pre-process it and uh, store it in a structured format. As you can able to see in the image, Initially, the whole web pages have uh, different different contents. So after that, we will use our scrapping program to extract the information that will be completely unstructured. Uh, mostly it will be text or some images, videos. It can be anything. It can also be uh, some other links to some other website. And after that, we will be storing uh, in a structured format. So we will be processing the data in any kind of a table or a JSON format. It can be anything. So there are different ways to scrap website such as online services, APIs or writing your own code. So there are available services uh, that are existing but you have to mostly pay for those services. So in this tutorial series we are going to learn how to write our own code to extract our specific needs from the web pages. Is web scrapping legal? Some websites allow web scrapping explicitly and some websites uh, forbids web scrapping. So before scrapping a website, read all the terms and condition of the website if you are working for a company as a professional web scrapper. So you have to do all these uh, things before uh, doing any kind of uh, scrapping on that particular website. If there is some legal issue by scrapping the site means the other company, the company website can able to sh sue you. So beware of that. Every website has a robot dot text file so this text file is very important i'll be explaining this robot dots text in a separate uh, video so it will be stored in a server you can able to access it uh, using uh, if it's amazon.com means you can able to access amazon.com slash robots dot text like that you can able to access it so this file contains the permissions about who can able to access and what all the features they can able to access because uh, Unlike us, many of the professionals will use large amount of uh, data. So for that, they will scrap so much data because of that the server uh, may reach some bottleneck because of multiple requests. That's why they have uh, specified this robot.txt file. So be sure to read it before doing any kind of scrapping. How does web scrapping works? So for us, we are going to write our own code that sends a request to the server that hosting the page we specified. So we need to specify the page and we will send a request to the server and get the pages source code. After that, we will uh, filter the HTML elements in the particular page in order to get the content we want. So we have to instruct all these things in our code. If it's specified in some special tag like a div or uh, some other tag means, you have to specify the tags and the class name to get that particular content because uh, they have uh, various uh, tags in the whole web page. So you have to specify 
what content you have need. So here for an example, if you want to get all the titles inside H2 tags from a website, we could write our code and we need to follow these steps. So first step, our code will uh, request the site's content from its server and download it. So we'll be having all the pay source code of that particular page. Then we will uh, process that code and we will convert the code into a HTML format because it will be some unstructured data. So we need to pass it into HTML code. And after that, we will search for H2 tags alone. So we'll be doing some filtering process. So we will be using some modules for that. We will see that later. Whenever it finds an H2 tag, it will just copy the content. What is uh, inside? It can be any content. So it will just uh, copy it and store it in whatever format we have specified. It can be a table, it can be a JSON, it can be anything. So we have to specify all these rules. Components of a web page. A web page is generally made of four types of files. The first one is HTML. It contains the main content of the web page. It contains all the text information, tags, the URLs, everything will be in the HTML file. The second one is CSS file. So the CSS file is used for uh, styling the HTML file. This is like uh, mostly related to front end. If you want to get the styling of that particular content means you can able to get it using the CSS file. Third one is JavaScript file. JavaScript file brings interactivity to the web page. So if you are clicking some button and if you are going to do some validations, means there will be use of JavaScript file. So we will be dealing with these files in the web scrapping. So sometimes sometimes we'll be using a different module for scrapping the content from the HTML file. If the website is working based on the JavaScript uh, file means we'll be using uh, another module. So we'll be exploring all these uh, types of content later. And the fourth one is images file. It can be JPG or PNG file formats for showing images in the web page. Apart from that, we also have uh, videos, music, uh, hyperlinks. It, the file contents uh, will keep on going, but this is the most uh, popularly used uh, file types. As we are interested in extracting the data from the web page, we will be mostly using the HTML file for extraction of data. Even if it's a JavaScript file means, we will try to extract the HTML elements so we can able to scrap as many information as possible from that particular site. Basics of HTML structure. So this is like a sample snippet of the HTML code. So now you can able to see in the body, we have a H1 tag and we have a div tag. And also that is substructured into UL, that is unordered list and uh, li, that is a normal list. So we'll be having a opening tag and the closing tag. So in this uh, HTML uh, structure, if you specify the div tag, it will start from the opening and it will get the content from the closing tag. So that's how it works. So if you specify this content means it will get all the content. If you specify table and a th alone means it will just get that particular line. Like that you can able to get a specific line or a specific element from the web page. As you can able to see here in inside div there is a unordered list and after that uh, there is an ordered list. So that is a parent and child. So we'll be using some kind of path to get that particular content also. We'll be using uh, different types of formats that is uh, web locators, that is this div tags and the CSS code and uh, other uh, tags you can able to extract. And the other one is uh, XPath. So if you want to extract that particular element like div, ul and uh, li means, we so we will be going in terms of a path. So I'll be covering uh, this paths and the web locators in the next video. That is an important term before uh, going into practical implementation. And the last one is libraries for web scrapping. So there are uh, various amount of libraries for uh, web scrapping, but we are going to use these uh, important models that are popularly used. The first one is Selenium. So this is a web testing library that automates the browser activities. So Selenium can also be used for automation. Maybe I will cover some automation project also in this tutorial series if possible. So through the web driver, we can able to access the browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Edge, Opera. 
Safari, etc. It can be anything, but most of the community using Chrome driver because it uh, supports uh, many uh, features and the flags also. That's why we are also using uh, Chrome. And this library uses web drivers in order to test commands and process the web pages to get the data we need. So we'll be uh, having some commands like click this button, enter the text in the search bar. Like that, we will be giving commands using code and it will automate the entire process. So using this automation also, we can able to get some particular uh, element from the page. So that's it for Selenium. And the next one is Beautiful Soup. This is one of the popular uh, packages for uh, parsing HTML and XML documents. It creates uh, data parse trees in order to extract data easily. As I already said, when we request uh, for the page source content, the data will be in an unstructured manner. So we have to parse this content, whether it is an HTML or XML. After parsing, we can able to easily extract those tags. Uh, if it's div or any other tags, you can able to easily extract that particular tag and we can able to extract the information of that particular content. It can be text, it can be link, it can be anything. So these two packages I'll be using uh, in the videos based on the necessity we have. So I'll be uh, going back and forth uh, between these modules. And the last module we are going to use is Pandas. Pandas is a library used for data manipulation and analysis. It is used to store the extracted data and stored it in desired format. So it can able to build a structured data like in a table format and store the end result as a CSV. So it will be very useful. We also use Pandas for uh, various machine learning projects. If you've seen that uh, videos, you can able to see that. If you didn't see the ML projects means you can able to see it uh, in my channel. For the libraries, we'll be using these three. I'll be uh, showing how to install these libraries in a separate video. Apart from these libraries, there are other libraries also for getting the request. Uh, that is request model, URL library, Scrappy. So many libraries are there for the purpose of web scrapping for different different scenarios. So to cover the overall scenario, I'm going to use these three libraries um, in most of our projects. So I'll be uh, going in a step by step basis. So for this entire tutorial series, I'm going to use uh, Jupyter Notebook as an IDE and as usual Python. So I'm going to explain in a step by step manner so it can able to show the output instantly. That's why I'm going to use a Jupyter Notebook in order to explain you guys what it is actually happening inside the code. So this will be the plan for the tutorial series. And that's it guys. This is the introduction of web scrapping. If you have any other suggestions for modules or uh, techniques, please leave a comment below. And if you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe the channel and share it to your friends. Stay tuned for the next video.